it's important to acknowledge that research isn't neutral. We come with a worldview that shapes how we do our research, and that's why we have these two conflicting bodies of research. As Donna said, the conflict tactic scale looks at individual acts that could be called aggression out of their context and meaning. Uh, so, for example, it might ask whether you've ever kicked somebody, and, there's a, and two people might say yes, a man and a woman. You might have kicked someone with your slippers on, or you might have kicked them with a steel um, boot, steel cap boot. So th that's why those sort of tools are found by feminist researchers to be unsatisfactory, because they actually are not looking at a pattern of behaviour um, and an intentional pattern of behaviour. In fact, the beginning of that survey says, look, every couple has violence. How do you, when you're sorting it out, is that what you use? We know that domestic violence doesn't just happen because of conflict. We know that men use violence uh, as an intentional way to control, not just because there's a conflict. Uh, so it's different ways of seeing the world that have shaped two bodies of research that give us these very conflicting and seemingly surprisingly different outcomes. Yes, um, there's very good Australian homicide data from the Homicide uh, Monitoring Project done through the Institute of Criminology, and that tells us that, I guess, the extreme end of domestic violence is homicide. Uh, it tells us that for women in Australia, the person who's most likely to murder you is your partner or ex-partner. That's through boyfriend, marital, cohabiting relationships. Uh, of the intimate partner uh, murders every year in Australia, of which I think remember my stats, there's 77 or so, 75% of those are perpetrated by men on their female partners and the research by the homicide monitoring um, research at AIC um, consistently finds that that murder follows a long and sustained um, period through which that woman has been subjected to domestic violence. So, but the other thing to remember is, I guess that's an example of how serious domestic violence is and how women are very much at risk. Uh, but that's a relatively small group of women and many women suffer in fear and terror every day of their lives, even if they're not murdered. So I think the homicide statistics tell us one thing, but I think we should focus on the suffering of women every day in their lives, many more women as well. I just want to say something about um the politics of research methodologies and trying to work out what is true and right. In my experience, I think men tend to respond to the claims of feminists and feminism in probably four different ways. Uh, and the most common way is simply to ignore it, to ignore feminism and just go on with enjoying being a man. Um, and occasionally, if challenged, a man will say, well, prove it prove there's inequality, prove that women earn less, prove that women are more likely to be victims, um, and so send women away to try and collect all the data before they'll take it seriously. Uh, a second response is to say, all right, uh, it is a problem, but it's really an equal problem. Um, there is equal amounts of sexism, men suffer sexual harassment, men suffer uh, domestic violence, and that way to try and take the, the wind out of the sails of acknowledging structural inequality. And uh, so you see things like um, university campuses starting up uh, men's offices uh, on campus alongside women's offices, or you see the men's health, uh, men too movement starting up saying, what about men's health issues? So suggesting that in some ways that sexism cuts both ways. I think popular television really encourages this idea that there is a, a mutual and equal gender war going on. Uh, the third way is to go right on the defensive or even the attack and uh, just to say that uh, men are more victims um, and uh, if you type into uh, a Google search engine the terms men and violence then you'll get the most um, worrying websites that come up at the, as the first hundred hits, which are about the lies that feminists tell and uh, about the men as victims. Um, 
And so there's a lot of that that's going on, I think also the, the men's rights approach to the issue. And the, the final response, which I would hope things like the White Ribbon Campaign encourage amongst men, is to, for men to become uh, pro-feminist in their outlook and to acknowledge the, the value of a feminist analysis, not just for um, women, but for improving gender relations and for, uh, for men to see that there are benefits in uh, taking on a, a feminist analysis, analysis as well without being defensive uh, and without being guilty. So I think those four responses sit behind the questions uh, surrounding the research and the stats.